know what the difference is between you and me? I make this look good. In the summer of 1997, Columbia Pictures releases the blockbuster Men in Black, where the antagonist, an insectoid alien, makes an attempted getaway in a UFO that is being covered up as the World Expo Observatory Towers in Flushing Meadows Park, Queens, New York. This Hollywood scene would be my first introduction to a World's Fair. The New York World's Fair was a financial failure and would mostly be remembered for Walt Disney's sophisticated animatronics of the time. I wouldn't hear of a World's Fair again until the late teen years of the 21st century, when I became enchanted by a research community known as Tartaria. How had I never been exposed to these expositions? Not even a whimper in school. The more I saw it started to click why I was oblivious to these events littered throughout history. According to Britannica, there have been over a hundred world's fairs in more than 20 countries. These so-called temporary cities appeared to be smoking guns, a window into a covered up past in which the controllers would prefer the future forgets. Having recently taken some time away from the channel has been a blessing. It's given me some time to reflect on the topics and consider how I want to approach this next subject. With a better understanding on how to search for rare images by targeting local digital collections, it didn't take long to find construction photos from the major American expositions. One channel that has been vocal regarding the Tartarian narrative for the expositions is Static in the Attic, and I do believe all the criticism he gets is well deserved when it comes to how the material is presented. Having received some well R&R, &R, it's time to kick up some dust and re-examine the expositions. Now for those of you who are in the all photos are fake crowd, I encourage you to stay till the end as I will present some questions for you. We'll start with the San Francisco's Panama Pacific International Exposition of 1915. This collection was taken by the Cardinal Vincent Company, now digitally housed under Calisphere. These 15 pages of images give us great insight into the atmosphere of the fair. From the general audience, the performers, and most importantly, the interiors of the architecture. If we are going with the narrative that these were ancient cities, let's also take into account the destruction of San Francisco in 1906. How were these fair structures still standing from the aftermath, when so much of the city was leveled? And if these are not temporary structures, why go through all the effort of showing them off, if the plan is to cover up their existence later down the road? The same goes for Chicago with its destruction in 1871, 12 years before its first World's Fair. Of course there's the theory all of the timelines are off, which I believe has merit, especially the further back one travels down the timeline spiral. But just as 99.5% of this community would agree gravity is just a theory that hasn't been proven, the same can be said for claiming these photos to not belong in the year 1912. When it comes to construction photos, the San Francisco Public Library Digital Collections contains 10 pages of the most high quality images one could ask for. The image resolution is so impressive the library charges up to $35 per download, but free to scroll on their website. And for anyone who may be new to my channel, and wants to rebuttal the whited out sky is proof of doctoring, debunking orthochromatic film is where you'll want to start before pitching those claims.
Another common question is, where are all the construction workers? I too once found this a valid inquiry. Today we have the ability to take an infinite amount of pictures from our camera phones. Run out of space? No problem. Simply upload to the cloud and you're ready to take more pictures. In 1912, photography was not as readily available. A photographer is most likely not gonna roll up on a construction site and start snapping photos if they are not commissioned to do so. Unless they're extremely passionate about documenting construction sites as a hobby. If a photographer is commissioned to document a construction site, they're gonna show up when the financier tells them to. And most likely, the ones putting up the money are gonna decide what gets photographed. When I take pictures, I wait till every single person is out of the way. Because why would I want some randomo standing in my photographs? And as for those who will say the construction photos from San Francisco appear to be deconstruction of these ancient cities, well, the public library also provides some of the demolition.
Something interesting I didn't know. The Fine Arts Palace in San Francisco, which still stands today, was not built to be permanent. An outcry from the public to leave it standing was upheld, and it wouldn't be until the 1960s when the more permanent features we see today would be added in, following the death of the original architect. The Fine Arts Palace is a key element to the Tartarian narrative, as proof the entire fairgrounds were not temporary infrastructures. Yet, the 1960s construction, along with the photographic evidence, seems to go unaddressed by the community. The San Francisco Public Library is not the only local digital collections archive to host their World's Fair construction photos. The St. Louis Public Library digital collections has an even more impressive 59 pages worth of construction photos for the Louisiana Purchase Exposition, also a very high quality resolution. The White City construction photos from the Columbian Exposition can be found on the Chicago History Museum website, though the image resolution not as impressive. Photos of the structures in disrepair can also be sourced. For some, you might be wanting to reverse this and claim the buildings were discovered in this condition. When comparing a brick building in disrepair for an extended period of time to that of the Fine Arts Building, we can see a general lack of overgrown vegetation. Let's say none of these photos I've shared work for you. One of three things is taking place here. 
One, everyone from the 19th to early 20th century was so clueless they never caught on to the scam taking place before their very eyes. And these ancient cities were rubbed in their faces one last time before being erased from history. Two, as it's been pitched, these events were re-education centers to indoctrinate and introduce the populations upon their new frontiers, in which they would inhabit post-reset. With mind control technologies so advanced, everyone who left the fairgrounds had their memories wiped clean of these events. Either way, there appears to be zero evidence of an oral history to what is being pitched by the Tartarian community when it comes to the World's Fair's true purpose. The population was too dumb to catch on, or our past reads like an L. Ron Hubbard science fiction novel. Or option number three, the most simple explanation. The internet got this one wrong. And if the controllers so badly want the truth of the world fairs erased from history, why is it when searching Columbia Exposition Demolition on Yahoo, stolen history's explanation of the events is the first up in the search results? Not only that, but also on the first page of results, is Noel Joshua Hadley's I Do Not Believe the 1901 Pan American Exposition. Here the writer explains the only proof given to the construction of the expositions is little but newspaper propaganda, whereas Disney World is well documented with blueprints, storyboards, and photographs. On Explore Chicago Collections, we get blueprints of the Columbian Exposition. I'm not sure what scale model they are in, but we get a fair amount of them. When researching COVID-19 on Yahoo, there's no hint on the first page of search results to suggest anything different than the mainstream's narrative. So is this a win for the Tartarian community, where the truth is finally being made readily available for anyone skimming the surface of these topics? Or is the Yahoo algorithm doing what it does best, putting disinformation on a pedestal? I don't know who started the conversation of the world's fairs being more than just temporary cities, but I don't believe for a second it was done to mislead people. It was a genuine curiosity from a community questioning history, as we should. The closing statements from Yahoo's highlighted Stolen History article goes as follows. I can't imagine a project this large being so badly documented. I don't believe this, but even if the entire fairground was made in three years and it all happened exactly as we're told it did, why has this never been repeated? Surely things get more efficient over time. If this was done in three years in 1893, I mean 25% of the country attended, so it's definitely a good moneymaker. As mentioned at the start of this presentation, the New York World's Fair, which was the last major exposition, was a financial failure. Not even Walt Disney could save that one. And as for Stolen History's claim on the Chicago Fair, why has this never been repeated? Well, that statement couldn't be any more inaccurate. How about the 1934 Chicago World's Fair? There were over a hundred expositions in 20 countries. The biggest issue I take with this research community, and I've been 100% guilty of it, is we aren't looking hard enough for the counter information. And then when someone like myself does expose the information, some are so far down the rabbit hole they refuse to turn back. Because nothing can be trusted. Except for that first piece of information they received on the fair as being more than temporary structures, that nugget was legit. It is not my life's work to tell you how to think or what to believe. If you wish to continue down the path of expositions belonging to ancient civilizations, cool. The truth is, if my awareness of the world's fairs would have started here, with the abundance of construction photos tucked away in hard-to-reach places, and then I heard about the Tartarian narrative regarding the fairs, I would have said, eh, I don't know guys, there's a lot of evidence to suggest otherwise. But I didn't start here. I started here, listening to circles like Stolen History that claim these events are so badly documented. And now I'm like, eh, I don't know guys, there's a lot of evidence to suggest otherwise. And it's for this reason, I'm out.